Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about four reasons why I think I got into some of the top graduate schools in electrical engineering. If you didn't see my video where I talk about how I made my decision on where to go for graduate school, I'll link that video down below. But after I made that video, I got a lot of people reaching out to me asking for advice actually on how to get into graduate school. And I definitely don't have all the answers, but I think I can still be very honest and talk about why I think I got into certain top graduate schools. I'm not going to take all the credit. Like, I'm not going to say that I deserved to get into every single school that I got into and I did everything exactly right. But I feel like with a little bit of luck and some prior planning, I was able to set myself up pretty well to get into some good schools. I also know that some of the things that I'm about to say are not going to be possible for some people to do, but I hope that I can still provide some useful tips in this video. Number one, I think I had really good recommendations. Graduate schools are trying to evaluate whether you'll be a good fit for their program, and I think a really good recommendation letter can make a huge difference. The recommendation letters give the admissions committee a completely different perspective on who you are. Yes, the recommendation letters could mention your grades, which would be represented on your transcripts anyway, but they can also talk a lot about your character. The three people I asked to write my recommendations, I had taken at least one class with each of them, and one of them I had done undergraduate research with, another I had done my senior design project with, and with the third faculty member, I was very active in his class, always going to office hours, and I graded for him for one semester. So all of these faculty members knew who I was, and they were familiar with not only my work, but who I was as a person. Another thing that a lot of people don't really talk about is the fact that whoever writes your recommendation letter, their word carries a lot of weight at whatever school they got their PhD from. So like if one of the people who's writing you a recommendation letter went to Stanford and they write you a very commendatory recommendation letter, that increases your chances of getting into Stanford. And the reason is graduate schools are trying to determine whether you will be successful in their program. Someone who went there and who successfully went through their program would probably know pretty well whether or not you would also be successful there. So for me, one of the people writing a recommendation letter for me went to Stanford. Another faculty member writing a recommendation letter for me went to UIUC. Both are really great schools. And applying to graduate school is such a crapshoot that I think each of these recommendation letters did help me get into these individual schools. The second reason why I think I had a strong application which helped me get into some of these top graduate schools was I took graduate level courses while I was an undergrad. So even though I didn't have a very refined focus and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to research when I got to graduate school, I did have some idea of what I wanted to do. I was applying to graduate schools in the signal slash image slash video processing space. And I was thinking I could do anything from wireless communications to more computer vision-y type stuff. So to show that I was serious about my path, I took some more advanced math courses like real analysis. I took graduate level wireless communications. Like, for instance, if you want to do machine learning when you're in graduate school, but all you did in undergrad was like hardware type stuff, like analog circuit design or something like that, the admissions committee will likely think that you won't be prepared for graduate level courses in the machine learning space. Also, every undergraduate program is going to have a core curriculum and certain requirements in terms of coursework that you need to complete in order to graduate. But I feel like if you want to go to graduate school, you shouldn't view the core curriculum as your entire curriculum or the minimum requirements as the target. I'm guessing if you just always want to do the bare minimum, then you probably will not be successful in graduate school. I'm the type of person who, if I don't have some sort of challenge, I feel a bit unproductive with my time. And I also viewed taking these more advanced courses as a way for me to figure out what type of research I might want to do when I'm in graduate school. So not only did taking these courses help me figure out what type of program I might want to apply to or what type of school might be a good fit, it also helped me figure out what I was actually interested in and whether or not I'd even be able to keep up in a graduate level course. Because as tough as some of these undergraduate courses might seem, Graduate level classes move twice as fast, and the content of a graduate course is also more advanced. So I just wanted to see how I handled that. And I think it's an invaluable experience to just try out a graduate course when you're an undergrad. Another component of my application that I felt helped make it stronger was my statement of purpose. 
Your statement of purpose, much like the recommendations, is another part of your application that isn't just numbers. You can really show your personality, your dedication, your motivation, your passion for what it is that you're trying to pursue. And you can also show that you can write well. I mean, I haven't been on admissions committees, so I don't know, but I've helped proofread other people's SOPs, and I sometimes review journal and conference papers, and I think you'd be surprised by the number of people who have trouble with writing, and by the number of people who don't know how to edit themselves to be able to deliver ideas concisely and clearly. After you write your statement of purpose, I highly recommend you have other people look at it. If they don't read it and understand exactly why you want to go to graduate school, what your aspirations are for your career, and how going to graduate school is going to help your career in any way, then you need to rework your statement of purpose until it clearly conveys all of those things. For your statement of purpose, I think you can really stand out if you are able to concisely convey how enthusiastic you are, how motivated you are, how much you've thought about your career, and how obtaining a graduate degree will help you achieve whatever you aspire to achieve. A concise and well-written statement of purpose, I think, can really help your application stand out. And lastly, and I can't tell you how important this is because I don't really know, but I do feel like I have gotten some opportunities because I'm a woman in a male-dominated field. Is it controversial to say? Possibly. But I did get a scholarship to go to school for electrical engineering that I don't know if I would have gotten had I not been a woman. I really don't know, but I can't say for certain that being a woman has not helped me stand out at times. Unfortunately, the pool of applicants to graduate school is always so huge, and certain applicants are just going to stand out maybe without even really needing to try. Another thing I think a lot of people don't really talk about is the fact that if you are a U.S. domestic student applying to graduate school in any of the engineering disciplines or computer science, you are actually in the minority. It's actually become a problem getting good students here in the US to go to graduate school. Because especially in tech, there are so many good high paying jobs out there that you can get with just a bachelor's degree that if you think about it, if you can start making a ton of money straight out of undergrad, that option is going to look so much more attractive than going to graduate school, making minimum wage, putting yourself through all the stress of taking courses and exams, and basically having no days off, it becomes very difficult for US schools to retain their undergrads. So I think I was a minority in more ways than one. I know not everyone is going to be so fortunate to be an Asian American woman applying to graduate school in electrical engineering, but I do think it helps me and I wanna be honest about that. I also know that I've worked hard to get what I've achieved, but I can't deny that I may have been dealt a hand that makes the game just a bit easier to win. And that's going to conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've gotten some useful information out of watching this. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I always try to respond to comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh boy.